Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Real back with another review, man. Yo, happy Mayans Monday. Yes, indeed. Clap it up. Mayans Monday. This is uh Mayans MC season two, episode four. Yeah, I think I got it. I think I nailed that one. Yeah, season two, episode four. And we finally, this one finally answered some questions. And I like that it came early. They didn't draw it out to get to this whole happy thing. Right? Because they could have. They definitely had a, a window where the whole season could have been dedicated to happy. I mean, he's a big figure from Sons. Um, he was killed, killed their mother. That could have been a very climactic, like, okay. But it almost seemed like they had a mid-season wrap-up, a little early mid-season wrap-up. Like, okay, we got happy. Let's move forward from that. So that's where we're going to start. Happy is a G. Like, he's a gangster. And you learn that even gangsters got limits. It's a few things that happen in this scene between Angel, uh, Easy, and Happy. One thing is Angel is just now discovering that Easy knows all the information. He had to give it up. They wasn't getting nowhere with Happy with the beating the shit out of him and all these other things. So they're going in the kitchen to, like, to work it out. Okay, how can the fuck can we, you know, but he screams, you know, Easy looks at him and goes, did the cartel do it? And now Angel needs to have a sidebar. Like, what the fuck are you talking about the cartel? Like, why would the cartel have anything to do with this? And Easy's like, ah, oh, shit. Okay, let me let you in on the rest of the information. Go in the kitchen, let him know, like, hey, you know Pops? Yeah, that he's not Felipe. He's Ignacio. And Mom's name is not her name. It's, like, some other shit. Isabella or some shit. And now Angel's whole world is rocked. He doesn't know which way is up, but he does know one thing. I'm gonna beat this shit out of Easy, because that's that's pretty much all I can I can formulate at this point. Cause I want to hurt somebody, and my brother's right here telling me secrets that I'm just now finding out about. I'm supposed to be the oldest. Catch these hands. So they whooping each other's ass in the kitchen. Happy's looking over, smiling. I like that part. Happy's like, okay, yeah, they ain't got their shit together. All the while during the torture. His phone is blowing up, so they've surmised that somebody's going to be here soon. So we got to make some shit happen. Now, in a desperate attempt, they go to carve off one of the happies on his body. He took that like a G, stuck a gun inside the wound. Damn, that was in his rib cage. And Happy didn't even scream as loud as I would have. I would have cried. I would have screamed, cried, spit. I would have gave you the information definitely at the carving of the at, at, of the of my body i probably could take a pistol whipping or two and i'd have stood solid but the second you start cutting meat off my body i'm probably going to give you all the answers so that's just for all my all my riders out there all my subscribers don't put me in no situation where i got a snitch on you and it comes from torture like please no i'm good I'm, you know you stay silent wait for the lawyer we good on that note but if y'all get me in some shit where there's some torture involved. Just know you're going down. I'm not happy. And I wouldn't be happy. See what I did there? Double entendre. Don't ask me how. That just happened. Um, So they couldn't break him. And that dog kept barking. And Angel was like, fuck this. I'm killing this dog. Enter. That was another thing. I was like, yo. Dogs are an endangered species on this show. That was like a a, a foreshadowing of dog shit love for dogs willingness to kill dogs like open to end up the the back history of easy and his dog dogs is a low-key center point in this in this series like so angel about to go kill it happy finally spoke said man he's just hungry like don't do that don't do that and then they looked at each other like okay these are the first words we got out of this motherfucker so how about this? He loves that dog. So weird. So Angel describes in brutal fashion what he wants to do the dog. I said, Jesus Christ. He came up with that off top. I'm going to blow off each one of his legs. Okay. I'm going to cut his nose off. All type of shit. I'm going to keep him long enough to where you see him suffer. And I was like, Jesus Christ, Angel. 
That's some sick shit. Right there, you think Angel's the crazy one. Like, the way this, this series flipped, like, Angel was like, who threatens to do those specific acts to a dog? And I think he was dead ass. I don't think that was like no, because the, thi- the, the things a desperate man will do to get what they want has no limitations. He looked very serious about blowing that poor dog's legs off one by one. That's some sick shit. So Happy gave it up. He was like, okay, fuck it. I'll let you know everything. They get the info. Now, I do not like this. Okay? You know, uh, Prospect shows up. They play nice. They decide not to kill Happy. We're going to stage this whole, we were just having a conversation. We saved him. Good money. Happy looks at him and say, man, look, if I know some more information. So now we just cool. I... I don't know. I don't know if I I don't know if I ride with that. Somebody as emotional as Angel, quick to quick to act, and easy who devoted so much time and prison time following the death of his mother and how that shit rocked their family. You got your mom's killer right here, and because he was hired to do it, we look at it as oh, it was business. This is the same woman whose ashes y'all kiss when entering and leaving the house. This is the same woman who's got fucking Felipe all fucked up in the house by herself, miserable, and 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 ruined the relationship. You know what I'm saying? Just made the relationship between him and his kids a little bit more tense because now he's stuck raising or, you know, I mean, he raised them, but now he's just overseeing his two adult sons with no with no help. Just three men in the family left. And all this you know, and you wanted that revenge. Then you got it right here. And you don't fucking kill him? I don't believe it. That's unbelievable. Happy even looks the motherfuckers in their face and say, if somebody would have killed my mama, I would have put a bullet between their eyes. Period. And I'm like, yeah, Happy, for sure. I feel you on that business personal i don't give a shit oh somebody hired you hey well thanks for telling me who that was but i gotta kill you so it was nice i appreciate you though for this time that you gave me this good information no i'm just like and they just i don't know to me that was unrealistic i ain't like that i ain't like that you're supposed to shoot happy and i know i love happy but the nigga got to die he killed my mom i don't i don't give a shit I don't give a shit. He got to go. Prospect too. Whoever comes through the door, getting it. And we out. But, I, you know, they came up with, you know, they're just all going to be cool now. And now anytime we see him, it's just respect or something. Like, we just give a nice little head nod. Like, yeah, you know what's up. It's all love. You kill my mama. It's cool. Let's go have drinks later. Like, what? Okay. But, yeah. So, happy lives. But they got the information. They ain't got all of it, but they know it was higher up. And Happy even let them know, like, hey, I know this ain't going to help you none, but your mama was ready for it. She saw me. She saw the gun. She was like, yep, let's do it. So I don't know why I was uh, commissioned to kill your mother, but she knew what time it was. So that's interesting. That was an interesting piece of information. And it also was interesting to find out that Happy was a gun for hire while a nomad. And then when he had that botched job and he was scared the cartel was coming, the motherfucker patched over to Charmin. Now, let me ask y'all a question. Does that make him scary? Does that make him like a hoe? Like, he was cool with the nomadic lifestyle and murdering people for a dollar. But now, you think the cartel on your ass, so you go link up with a with a club? And then what, aren't you putting the club in danger? Do y'all respect that move? I was looking like, you know, we always like happy, but then I'm like, do I respect that move? That was kind of like, he ain't going to, he didn't tell nobody. I mean, what's his name knew about it? Um, um, Parker? No, that's not right. Porter? No, oh, what the fuck was his name? Wherever, that, the, the, San, the nigga that runs San Bernardino chapter of um, Sons, he the one who uh, commissioned happy for the job. But he don't even go link up with him. He goes to Charmin and link up with those sons. And I don't know. I don't think I respect that move by Happy. The sons have no idea. See, this is 
You just and that's some dangerous shit for a club. You just take on they shit. Maybe even unknowingly. Like, who wants beef with a cartel? Like, hey, is Happy there? Like, what, is Clay and them just going to give up Happy? Like, but okay, so we got that out the way. We still know there's more information. We got to dig deeper. Um, What else happened this episode? Of note. Quickly, we have Emily finally doing her bribery thing. And this really nasty, unnatural tension between the two when they see each other. Um, but she's getting her plans done and somebody's snooping on her plans, taking photos. I don't know if it's the feds. We don't know if it's the feds. We don't know if it's another bidder trying to get the scoop on some shit, but Emily so far got the job done, but there is somebody there that could possibly fuck that up. So we just waiting to see how that thing unfolds. But, um, Emily baby, basically babysitted Dita this episode waited that did some shit with some papers and waited for D to come out. So Emily was a non-factor this episode, which typically means like, it's probably a good episode. And now the whole, uh, drama with Dita and, uh, it, her, her love, her crush Ignacio, we find out that with the fire coming, that's the whole reason she's going to see her. She was ready to burn to death. Dita was ready to check out by way of fire. Message. That's something to keep a that's something to look out for. But yeah, she was ready to burn to death. And that, you know, when I think about ways to go out, that seems like pretty fucking brutal. Like I could 100 percent seeing somebody going, you know what? I wanna I, I'm gonna kill myself, but I wanna go out in a blaze. So I'm gonna get some shit. I'm gonna set some shit on fire. And I'm going out flaming. I feel like the second that that hot ass fire touch you, like when you light that match and you go, you immediately regret doing some shit like that. I, I like fire hurts fire. This fire burns. It's not nice. And you immediately want it to stop. Thus the screams and the run around. So ah, like, yeah, I, you know, I don't promote suicide, but I mean, you know, at all, but I just feel like there's easier ways to go about it than, Allowing a fire to take you out. That just seems like fucking. So, yeah, Dita is crazy because she had several options of taking an easier death and she wanted to go with one of the hardest routes. And yeah, but I guess ever since being saved and and uh, <laughs> hating Emily and she's got a new purpose and that purpose is I'm just going to spill the tea and we find out why Dita has been harassing uh, Pops this whole time. It's to give him the information and say, hey, guess what? Miguel, I don't need to take a uh, paternity test. Miguel is your son. And Ignacio's like, oh, what the fuck? He's like, oh, come on, Dita. She's like, yeah. He was like, so who else knows about it? Nobody, just us two. You know what I'm saying? That's all who needs And that's how it's going to stay. But, you know, I enjoy these conversations, and we're going to do this again. And, he, <laughs> and I love, I love Felipe's reaction. To when she said, I'll see you again. We'll do this again. He was like, I can't fucking wait. Like, he's just, it's just like more shit. Felipe can't catch a break. And Dita's just, I, who knows what else Dita got up her sleeve. But she is just conniving. Like, she didn't have to share that information. And why does it take several visits of these conversations? This is some rich, bored woman who just want to start some shit. And unfortunately... It is at the cost of other people's lives. Like, Dita, come on, man. And and Felipe knows it. He's like, this is trouble. This is going to be a fucking problem. But that goes to show you, when people say everything done in the dark comes to the light at some point, that's very true. You hear people say, man, I'm taking it to the grave. Motherfuckers don't. Not Maybe one out of a thousand people actually take some shit to the grave and then somehow it gets discovered from beyond the grave nothing really stays secret so y'all keep that in mind you know what i'm saying and everything eventually some shit happens um so yeah that's that whole storyline so now we finna see now we're just like okay how does this now now they're brothers like what the fuck so what we're we gonna do about this 
So we wait on that too. So that they they closed off one with happy. We no longer after happy. They close a chapter on happy, open up a chapter on the potential issues with Emily's business, and then then they open it up another storyline when it comes to Miguel now being a son. Like uh, well, not son of it, like a son son, but like you know, a bro a Reyes brother. So now that's another storyline open. Um yeah, and then the next thing we got while that's going on is uh, the Mayans are taking a trip out toward the San Bernardino area. For what? I don't know. I forgot. Somebody in the comments remind me why we had to get all the guys on bikes and head that way. I'm confused. Did they have some business to take care of? And if it was, I don't know what it was. But anyway, they heading out there <coughs> and they run to the Swole Boys. Don't fuck with the Swole Boys. They ran to the Swole Boys, and uh, instantly Bishop knew something was up. Like, okay, why is all these motherfuckers greeting us here? They just gassing up and getting some snacks. And meanwhile, it's 47 bikers, the orphans, staring at them from across the street. And Bishop knows what's up. Like, okay, this is a little funny. So they already devising a plan. They're like, okay, we're trying to get this place. If we don't make it, then we fucking them up. So I like how plan A was... Try to get out of this without any casualties. Part, uh, and then part B is if the shit go down, we fucking these, we fucking them up. And he had, um, he had Hank go call up the uh, San Bernardino chapter of the Sons because that's their yard. They was in their backyard. So like, yeah, go call them and see what's up with this. Tell them to meet us somewhere. We need to, might need a little bit of backup. We don't know who these motherfuckers are. And then they give us a nice road rash 3D scene. Hank pulls out his fucking chain. That was my favorite part. Hank pulls out a chain and gets to beating the shit out of one of the bikers next to him. I was like, yes. Yes. I don't know if anybody that develops video games is listening to me. But for the love of Christ, man, please bring back Road Rash 3D. Put it for PlayStation 4, 5, all that good shit. Just redo it. Let us get the let's join our gangs again. Like, please. Please. I'm putting that out there in the universe. So, yeah, there's a battle on bikes. Riz goes down. They take down somebody. They pull out shotguns. Gilly, not Gilly, uh, Creeper is with the shit. He was, he, hey, <clears throat> Gilly outside the window with the shotgun. Creeper parks that bitch, hops out, and he gets to shooting at them. So the Soul Boys are quickly dissipating, right, because they're tough until the guns come out. Now, I don't know. This is my issue with the Swole Boys. They've run into... Every time they run up on these Mayans, these this Mayans shit, they know guns are there. It's not one encounter that they've had with the Mayans that guns weren't involved. Why the fuck can't none of these individuals get a goddamn gun? How do you have a gang of 40 motherfuckers and not one gun shared between y'all? Why start shit with people you know have guns on them? This is the Swole Boys. I I am they, as hilarious as they are. They should get wiped off the map for being fucking stupid. I don't understand it. Oh, there goes those Mayans guys again. Well, we're gonna get them this time. Hey, who has a gun? None of us. <sighs> okay. Um. Yeah. Fuck it. Just put your helmets on. Let's go. We'll, we'll deal with it when we get there. If they shoot us, ah, somebody's fucked up. It is what it is. But uh, they did get one of the sun. I mean, one of the Mayans. Riz went down, so I guess they got some payback. Bishop all automatically realized this is a payback thing. Like, we didn't do shit. They are intentionally after us. Okay. So something happened that we don't know about. We're going to get to the bottom of this. So they link up with the San Bernardino chapter of the Suns. And they go visit the, the Swole Boys at their gym. The Swole Boys Incorporated Gym. Where they all wear the same sleeveless t-shirt. Which is one of Rail's most dirtiest... Like, I think that is one of the most filthiest forms of shirt. Like, my man. Either get a wife beater or, to be PC, an athletic t-shirt. An athletic undershirt. Or you wear a fucking t-shirt. <clears throat> The sleeveless shirt is disgusting. What what like what is that? It looks like a solid 
a thin body vest, which is your which is just your arms and shoulders. It's nasty. It's nasty. I never want to. I hate it. I hate it. But anyway, um, so they all are matching the colors and that, and some big fucking Thor looking motherfucker comes out, and they're extra tough, still with no guns. So you know, Bishop and uh, Porter is it? Maybe it's Porter. I don't fucking know that guy's name, and it's killing me. Um, but they recognize that Thor got some balls. Like, oh, okay, he's with the shit. He don't got no gun, so he's dumb. But he's with the shit. And Bishop was letting him know, like, you know, I could just we could just shoot all of you in the face. Like, what are we doing? Riz hops out the car, get his payback. He finds a random dude, shoots his leg about several times, and we're good now. We're square. That's all we want to do. Uh, but they did find out from Thor that um, Swole Thor that it was two of the guys that started popping shots first, and this is what started the beef, which is partially correct. But he failed to mention how the Swole Boys was talking shit to them, and when they got they feelings hurt, that's when Angel flashed a gun and they got and they feelings and you know then we already know the story of the Swole Boys, so it's not completely true, but it is enough for Bishop and them to go fucking Reyes brothers like. And then sends uh, Coco on the mission to go find Angel and the Prospect so they could answer for this. Because you remember, that was Angel and um, Easy's secret mission. They was like, oh, no, he got to go do some pro shit, so we going this way, whatever, whatever. And that's when they ran to the Swole Boys on a hunt for uh, Happy. So now they're going to have to come up with a lie or figure something out because Bishop now knows that they got into it with a whole nother group of motherfuckers and there was none of that information shared so there's gonna hope so we don't know how that's gonna end up but bishop don't seem too concerned it got it got squashed there so they could pretty much get away with any type of lie that'd be fine nobody really gives a shit swell boys ain't affected nothing but bishop is a good president and he wants to fucking know why his guys are anywhere out here doing whatever the fuck they doing um also now, Adelita and Miguel, right? They on a mission to go holler at the 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 uh, mayor lady, Palermo, 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 and come up with a plan because uh, what's his name? Because Potter is on their ass. Uh, Potter is on to the plan, so they got to all three come together and figure out what the fuck we're gonna do from there. So, okay, let me get this straight. It's another issue I have with this this episode. So Miguel is the leader of a cartel. So they ditch the fancy cars because, you know, shitty cars are more blended. You could blend in a little bit better. Okay, cool. That plan makes sense. But what cartel leader, what's, his security failed him greatly. Who doesn't do a sweep of the fucking vehicle that your boss is in? He's a notorious drug cartel leader. You should be you should be checking every vehicle for a a bomb or a tracking device. So the Galindos have maybe the dumbest like group of security. Like it's the dumbest ran cartel. Who the fuck doesn't check for a tracking device? And the whole thing is to be, you're, you're trying to do sneaky shit behind the federal government's back. You're trying to fuck them, but you're not going to check to see if, you know what I'm saying? Like, you would want to be extra careful. You're about to pick up Adelita. Adelita don't do shit that ain't get swept first. She lived in the desert. For, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's where her rebel camp was, constantly moving. Shielded, had camouflage tents. Didn't trust shit that they didn't have. But you'll put her in a car that you ain't even track for tracking device, which is obviously right there. Like it wasn't even the most well hidden. <clears throat> wasn't even the most well hidden. So that just blew me. And then the Mercs was like, hmm, he's going. Uh, <clears throat> then the Mercs see the, the tracking device moving. And it's like, oh, he's going a weird direction. I don't know. I don't like it. He's usually on this side. He's going that way. Uh... I got a hunch. Let's just go for it. 
And that part is believable. I could believe that. Convenient, sure. But sometimes you just got an internal uh, uh, hunch. Like, you know, I don't know. It doesn't sit well with me. <clears throat> if it's nothing, it's nothing. But let's go see. So fair enough. But um, they find out. They get there. And uh, one of the security at least did one good thing and warned everybody that the Mercs was coming. And they got out of Lita, so it was a choice. We have a shootout, try to kill all the Mercs right here and to save Adelita, but then our plan will probably be fucked. They'll know what's up. And then Alita ran through all those scenarios in her brain and came up with, okay, fuck it. Um, y'all just say that you discovered me and I'll deal with it from there. Because she knows nobody's bigger than the program, so she sacrificed her and her unborn baby for the cause. So Adelita is solid as fuck for that. And that shows you the type of woman she is. She's like, you and Palermo and the and the rebellion is too important. And and it even works a little bit better that Potter has me because that will allow y'all to get y'all shit off and you've gained favor with him. So we could do a lot more things for the cause and that's for me. Whatever, man. As long as my people and we get this shit done, I'll be happy. So Adelita sacrifices herself. And goes out in a blaze of glory, spitting in his face and doing all this shit. So, yeah. Now, that's another storyline. Because, and, 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 and Miguel was visibly angry. Because he was really, he was really, in that backseat, in that conversation with Alita, you felt a, a kinship somehow. Like, they were really becoming cool. I don't know. I don't know. But he really felt connected to Adelita. And he was very salty when she got snatched. He started banging a hole into the wall, and it was just upsetting. And he wanted to fuck over the DOJ. Like, he wants to fuck people over for his father. And that tells you a lot about Miguel. You know, I'm not his biggest fan, but he does put family at the top. Maybe to a fault. Because we know how he is over his mother, Dita. And his father been so long dead, and still... He's like, I'm about to get revenge for my daddy. So that's just who Miguel is. Family first. So if you take his son, now I see why you would deal with those type of consequences. So, uh, yeah, man, but that was four. And what do I give this? Um, I'm going to go with a six out of ten. Maybe a five. It was some mid. It wasn't a filler episode right wasn't a filler episode it had some it had some real meat to this one it had purpose it had direction and it created storyline so actually i'm gonna go ahead and give it a six i'm gonna give it a solid six uh it was just a lot of unnecessary shit that happened it was a lot of filler things that you didn't need it was just uh, i don't know it was one of them and I guess the things that I wanted to happen didn't happen. So I'm just being, I'm totally being biased to what I wanted. So in theory, if I could just remove myself as an episode, it's probably a 7.5 to an 8. But Rail's personal, how I personally feel about this episode, it's probably a 6. So yeah. See, I could be biased and unbiased. You know what I'm saying? My favorite scene is uh, the happy one. That whole Happy just smirking at him. Happy's best moments was when he wasn't even talking. He was just staring him down. That was excellent. His facial acting was top notch. So Happy's that dude. So I got to give that to him. And then the fact that, and even in that scene when they lied to dude and, and uh, lied to the prospect and they dipped and he just sat there comfortably on his couch with his dog, still bleeding. He had a whole, he had a whole gun inside of his body and he didn't even clean himself up. He was just like, oh, well, I'm alive and I got my dog, so we're good. And that's just happy. Happy was happy. Like, that's crazy. And so I, I guess at the end, I'm glad he's not dead, but he should have died. He should have definitely been killed. But, yeah. And who I got winning this episode? This was a happy episode. I still, like, you know, everybody else is like, okay, I, I support Alita for that move she made. Big move. But... She didn't really have any options, but it's, it takes a big woman to just step up to that shit, especially with an unborn child. Um, 
who else could have been a runner up? That's about it, man. If it wasn't happy, it would have been Adelita. Because nobody else wowed me fucking Dita just being messy. And she's going to continue that. So, yeah. That's your, see, that's your episode four review, man. So, get in the comments. Join the Discord. Salute to the Discord gang. You know what it is. If you want to continue this conversation, see me in there. Uh, otherwise, be in the comments. And uh, if you ain't subscribed, do that already. Like, I don't, under- I don't understand. You've watched several videos at this point. Every fucking thing that drop you're watching, but you still, I just, you're just not motivated to press that like and not subscribe. I just don't get it. I, that, but you know what? It's above me. It's above me. You do you. But you gotta, you got to live with yourself. Protect your health, yourself, your wealth, man. Your boy Rail is out of here. Peace.